Hey, Deborah. Thanks so much for joining me on the She Ventures Now podcast. Thanks for having me. Yeah, I'm, it's been a long time coming because I feel like I've been trying to chase you down <laughs> for a while. But I really appreciate you taking the time despite your busy schedule. And we've known each other for like, what, 10 years? More than more than, yeah, more than 10, yeah. And, um, and I feel like we've had so many great girl chats yeah. about singleness, about life, about epiphanies, growth, you know, coming, uh, sort of coming into maturity phases of our lives. And I, I just really appreciate your perspective, appreciate your honesty, transparency all along the way, which is one of the reasons why I wanted to have you on the podcast, because I think that um, you, you give, you have a great lens through um, how you look at singleness and the things that you've learned have been pretty powerful things. And um, I remember one time we sat together for lunch at Fridays off of Broward Boulevard. <laughs> and we were talking about, you remember? Yeah. You remember that? I do, I do, I remember, yeah. Good, good. Well, what I wanna do is allow for space for you to kind of introduce yourself so people can know who you are and just a little bit about your singleness journey. Yeah, no problem. Um, as Gayon said, my name is Deborah, and um, my singleness journey started when I rededicated my life to the Lord, and I wanted to live a life of purity and trust, and um, live in a life where God is the center of my story, and He's the one writing my story. So I was about maybe like 22. Pause real quick. Continue. Yes. So my journey started when I was 22 and it's been 15 years since I've been waiting on the Lord um, for this companionship, for the spouse. And within those 15 years, it's been hard. I'm not going to lie. It's been really, really, really hard. And um, but what I've learned is waiting on the Lord does not shield you from rejection. It does not shield you from um, the disappointment. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't shield you from hurt and pain. What it does, it gives you the outlet of trusting in something that is greater than you and, and relying that in the hurt, in the disappointment, in the rejection, you do have a rock that you can lean on. You do have someone who loves you, who sees you. And so um, that's, and I've learned a lot through my 15 years. And recently what I've learned is, um, my identity. I think mm. for a very long time, I've kind of dabbled in the identity of a girlfriend, which I was like, that's not your identity. Your identity is a wife. And I think like a lot of times um, I've witnessed women who kind of stay in the girlfriend zone and they're finding the girlfriend zone. And I'm just knowing in my heart that no, you're not called to be a girlfriend. Like you're called to be a wife. And growing in that and learning in that has been um, has been a journey, but it's been a good journey because I'm realizing more and more, the more that I'm waiting on God, the more I'm believing that at the end, it will be something really good. Like I don't have to, like my heart is not, because I've waited so long, God is just going to give me something. Mm. You know what I mean, like, no, I waited so long. I believe that God is going to give me something extraordinary, something great. So this this journey has been hard. It's been rough, but honestly speaking, I don't think I would change it for anything in the world because God was with me. I had the Lord by my side, and that right there um, helped me wait for fifteen years. This is good. So you wouldn't you wouldn't have wanted to get married sooner. I would have wanted to get married sooner. Don't get me <laughs> don't get me wrong. I would have wanted to get married sooner. Um, but I think for me, knowing my heart, if I dwell on I would have married sooner, like it would really pull me away from the Lord. Like it would cause my heart to be bitter, it would cause my heart to be angry at God. And I struggle with that. There are days where I struggle with, man, Lord, why is it taking so long? What is this? Blah. But um, I have to remind myself, Deb, you serve a God that is good. You got to trust in that. You serve a God that is good. You got to trust in that. Um, but at the same time, it's like, man, yeah, I wish I was in my fifth year of marriage or my seventh year of marriage, but that's not the case. And I just got to trust the Lord that, hey, <laughs> it's working for my good, right? Mm. <laughs> mm. We say to each other, it's working for our good, so I've got to trust that. 
I love it. I love it. So, you know, my podcast is all about giving the juice and I really love people telling their story as it is blunders and all celebrations and all milestones and all everything like that. We'll get to the lessons learned, but right now, one of the things I would love for you to share are just for a couple minutes, your extra single moments. Like, do you remember times in your life where you felt extra single? You felt like, Oh my gosh, this is not a typical day. This is a day where I feel the singleness. You know what I mean? I, I once saw a meme. <laughs> I was doing, I was preparing for my course and coaching program that I'm going to be launching. Yeah. And one of the memes that I saw was like, this right here is the meme. <laughs> it, is, it said this. Um, it said, oh, shoot. I hate when I can't tell it the, the same exact way. But it said, um, being an independent woman looks good up until 10 p.m. <laughs> And I was like, no. <laughs> but um, yes. Tell us, tell us something. Tell us some some moments in your life, because you know. Yeah, yeah. The journey, right? Like, tell us some moments where it's like, dang, Lord, this is why. <laughs> yeah. No, it's funny though because those extra moments where I feel like I'm extra single has been these past two years. I feel mm -hmm. like it's been even more heavy and it has a lot to do with um, watching other people get into relationships and other people getting married, um, especially, and I'm going to be just completely raw and honest right now, especially when they just stepped on the scene. Or, they just what? <laughs> like they just stepped on the scene, like they just came out of the womb and they're already getting married and it's like, Lord, I Wait, wait what do you mean? What do you mean they stepped on the scene and they came out of the womb? So for example, like someone who is, let's just say they've been a believer for maybe like two, three years. Right? Oh, so you're talking about in the church, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, in the church or just even in general, people who break up one day and then six months later, they're already in a relationship. You know what I mean? Like, those, <laughs> no, for real, like those type of things, like every time I see that, like I, I do, I, like I feel the extra singleness. I feel like, oh my gosh, this is really rough. And I agree with the meme. Like at night, when I'm, when I must, like, um, when it's time for me to go to bed, I'm like, oh my word, this ain't right. <laughs> this, <laughs> this, <laughs> this is not right. No, it's not right. This is so weird, Lord. Like I literally would like to have somebody lay next to me right now. So yeah, these past two years, I think have been um, like the awareness of me being single has been heightened. Like it's on a hundred and like part of me is, I think it's one of those things where, you know what, it, it is what it is. Like I can't. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <is> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I feel extra single almost every day now, honestly speaking. Um, but I'm not ashamed of it. I'm not like, I don't feel uh, any type of way of desperation or, um, I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. Like, I don't feel bad for feeling single, for feeling extra single and wanting to be with somebody. For sure. You know what I mean? Because I think a lot of times, um, especially in the church, they make it sound like if you want to be married or if you're in a stage in your life where you're thinking about it all the time, then you're not complete in God. <laughs> I, and I dislike that a lot because I really do feel like I'm complete in God. Like, so it's, so I go. That back. really serves the church really well. Huh? <laughs> what did you say? That thought really serves the church really well. Like, no, like. Stop I'm, thinking about getting married in a natural way. That's really good for you in the long run. And it's actually something God intended. You should be thinking about God. Come to church. <laughs> come to our ministry. Go through this process. Right, right. So, yeah. But yeah, there are moments where mm. it's just really real. And the struggle is real. Yeah, that's, that's helpful. And I appreciate you being super honest about that. All right. So what I want to do is kind of unpack some of your nuggets of wisdom, like things that you have had happen to you or things that you've learned that were aha moments. And what I mean by aha moments, are some, it's like a break in time or a point in your life where you actually like learned a lesson or you changed your mind, right? Because I think the Deborah at 25 is different than the Deborah at 35. You know, right. the Deborah at 27 is different than the Deborah at 37. Right. So I want to know what are some key aha moments that you had 
since you've been single, mm-hmm. even out of relationship, whatever, you know what I mean? Aha moments. Yeah. And they don't have to be super spiritual. They don't have to be super deep. It could just be right. something simple. Like you realizing that the girl who is getting into relationships, even after she breaks up, knows how to rebound. She knows how to, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I don't know. Something simple. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I've had some, I've had some aha moments, but a lot of, honestly speaking, a lot of my aha moments have been, um, I guess like on the spiritual side and not so much on the natural side, unless I just haven't been paying attention to the natural side. Like if it's happened, but not really paying attention to it. Mm -hmm. And I think more on the spiritual side, because the last 15 years has been me just at it with the Lord. So a lot of these aha moments are just spiritual. And one of them, um, one of the aha moments that I've had was one time I was just meditating and just talking to the Lord about like, you know, when will I get married? Will it happen type of thing or whatever? And then I remember the Lord saying to me, or just kind of encouraging me of like, Deb, whether in this life or the next, my, my, aim for you or my desire for you is to wear white and so it it was like this moment of like man god you really do see and you really do remember that even if i even if i don't get married on this earth there is a wedding ready for me at the marriage supper of the lamb like there is a day where deborah will wear white there is a day where deborah will be called a wife there is a day when that will happen even if it doesn't happen on this side of earth yes do i want it to happen on this side of the earth yes lord yeah there was this release of freedom where it's like man deb um there is a day where you will wear white like that's just the 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 gist of it that's where you are right now and it was encouraging like it really helped me um go from this bondage of like sadness i guess you can say to like okay a relief I needed that right then and there. Um, So that was a really cool revelation the Lord had for me. Um, I guess another aha moment that I can think of um, has been like these little moments where it's like, yeah, ain't nothing wrong with you. Like you, ain't nothing wrong with you. Like you, you're a good catch. You are a good catch. Because I would struggle a lot with just me in general from inside and out I would struggle and <clears throat> like the Lord really had to impress on me there is absolutely not, nothing wrong with you like you are oh, what's so good that is really good you know what I'm saying like you are a good catch and yeah all right let's do this like let's let's live life let's let's move on because mm-hmm. this whole mentality of like you know the reason why because x y and z no Deb, the way that you are is mm. Mm. So, I think for me that was another aha moment mm. like yeah. Mm. <laughs> Stop yeah. that. Stop that. Turn your microphone up. I know, right? <laughs> Live life. Anything else? Um, not that I could think of at this moment. Um, I think those are probably the two biggest aha moments in my life that I've had. Mm-hmm. Um as a single woman. Cool, cool, cool. I like it. I like it. All right. So let's do rapid fire questions. Let's do it. Rapid fire questions are really just, you know, short and to the point questions for you to give honest feedback quickly. Okay. Um, first one is as for terms, which one do you prefer using dating or courtship and why? Um, oof. <laughs> That's a good one. Um, Probably, dang, probably courtship um, because the end result for courtship is, I guess the mindset for courtship is marriage, where dating is a little bit loose, at least for me. Got it. Okay. Okay. Number two, do you feel like single people are neglected in the church? Yes. Why? <laughs> How? Um, <clears throat> Because although they have single conferences, but I feel like a lot of these single conferences are being held by married people. And so there's really no connection between like what's happening in the single conferences with 
people who's putting it on. I think for me, if I wanted to go to a single conference, I want someone who's single and kind of walking the, the whoop, me, whoop. To be the one to, to teach me, hey, this is how you want to live your single life. Ooh, I feel it in my spirit. Okay. Number three, do looks matter or not? Yes. <laughs> all, right, all right. Number four, in your opinion, the top priority for every single woman Every single woman, every woman, right? Every woman that is single should be your opinion. Um, I think the top priority for every single woman should be um, loving themselves. Off the chain. Number five, what's the worst or funniest meme on singleness you've ever seen? Oh my gosh, you're killing me right now. <laughs> oh, <laughs> there was one that says... Um, <laughs> I've been on the market for so long, I'm about to go on clearance. <laughs> <laughs> like, why? Hey, rough. Yeah. Yes. That, okay. that was funny. That's crazy. Um, number six, would you prefer being married at 20 or single until 40 than married? Say that one more time. Would you married. prefer being married at 20 or single at fo till 40 than married? Probably married at 20. Come on, being honest. Number seven, which one is it? Not enough single eligible men or women or not enough women, I'm sorry, not enough men looking in the right areas? Ooh. I, ooh. I I'm sorry, not, which one is it? Not enough single el eligible men or not enough men, I'm sorry, not enough women looking in the right areas. Does that make sense? Oh, yes, yes, it makes sense. Um, I think, oof. Ah, that first part is throwing me off. Um, not enough single eligible men. Yes. Um, I think probably not enough. The thing is, it's single. I think there's probably not enough eligible men. I don't, I, it's hard to explain. I'm, I'm trying to wrap Go ahead up. and try to explain it. Are yeah, you just okay, they're so, single, but they're not eligible? Is it, yeah, like... They, Mm, because the second part, we might say the second part again of that question. Not enough uh, women, women in the right areas. areas. I feel like women do look in the right place. I really do. I think because you're such a, like the, 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 the number of men is so scarce that it's like, where are you? So maybe probably the eligible, the single eligible men. I think Got it. Got it. So would you be, would, would arrange marriages or not, basically? Oof. Um, <laughs> ah, probably not for me. Probably not. Okay. Yeah. Why? Um, I don't know. I really want to establish friendship before I say yes to anyone. Mm, true, true, true. Yeah. Number nine, what book would you recommend to the She Ventures tribe and why? Mm. Um, probably, it's a book that I read a long, long, long time ago. Um, it's called When God Writes Your Love Story. And it was really encouraging um, because it kind of released me to be like, Deb, you got to let the Lord take control of this um, and just kind of like, as you're waiting on him um, to live life, like don't get so boggled down with wanting to get married that you're neglecting the life that you have. That's right. good. You know what I mean? So um, letting God write your love story while you're living life with friends, with family, even trying to, you know, like for example, how, yes, you want to get married, but it's not stopping you for, from, <laughs> not stopping you from writing a book it's not stopping you from living you know what I'm saying? So, like i think there's that combination of like all right lord you know write this one but at the same time i'm gonna live life like i'm gonna go out and meet people i'm gonna go out and have fun with my friends i'm gonna go out and you know venture into businesses and blah 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 and all that good stuff so um but that that book right there really helped a lot i can't remember who wrote it but it's called when god Lo writes your love story i think it's um Leslie Ludy or something like that? The, the Leslie sounds familiar. Sounds some, something like that, right? Mm -hmm. um, and this, here's the grand finale question. Thank you for that book recommendation, by the way. I think I've heard you, re, re, I think I remember when you read it. 
Um, uh, grand finale question is this. I don't know if you saw the movie Collateral Beauty. It came out last year. I didn't. Good, good movie. Didn't do well at the box office, but it was a great movie nonetheless. Mm-hmm. Um, Will Smith starred in it. It was written by Alan Loeb. And it makes an interesting assertion in the movie about navigating grief, pain, and disappointment, heartache. Um, it kind of hangs on this one line and concept of in the moment of your grief, make sure you notice the collateral beauty all around you. And what I want to do is ask you this. What would you say... Because even though singleness doesn't hinge on disappointment, right? It's not that we are always commiserating singleness. It would be dishonest if we didn't acknowledge like there's some disappointment in singleness, right? What would you say is the main collateral beauty you've seen in your singleness? Um, Probably how I've grown. Um, Yeah in who I am like I so from the time you know I was 22 in my 20s into now being 37 looking back I realized how much I've grown like I'm not stuck in the 22 year old mind of like throwing a tantrum of like why am I not married yet like like throwing the tantrum in a negative way of why, 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 Lord? But there's been this growth and this beauty inside of me that's realizing, man, Deb, you've got a lot of life left in you. You're beautiful. You're you're amazing. You're awesome. And so um, I think the collateral beauty is just watching myself grow. Yeah. Um, especially when I see other people being blessed in that area and there's no jealousy, there's no envy, there's no covetousness it's more like I'm ha- like I'm generally happy for you right now like I'm you know I'm happy for you and so I think um if that growth didn't happen I would have had a lot of anger and bitterness and probably lost a lot of friendship over that but just watching myself I guess like this mindset of growth that I have right now it's been like probably the biggest beauty that I've seen in myself in my singleness um, and learning that and being and having like this hope in the disappointment, having like this, um, like there are days where there is joy in the disappointment. And so I'm not letting it control. It's good. That's really good. You know what I mean? And so that's been probably the biggest beauty that I've seen in myself these past few years. Yeah, and I've seen it in you too as a friend. And so I do want to bookmark this time and end it here. I just am so thankful for you, Deborah, as a friend and as someone who is, you know, was willing to give so much on this interview. Thank you. I feel like a lot of people can glean from it and be encouraged by it and relate to it. So you have a great day. And thank you. Thank you.